this is Nicolette from Nicolette Styles and today I am calling out the recipe makers, the homemakers, the health coaches, the recipe developers, fitness coaches, beach body coaches, homemakers, everyone that needs to create recipes. I'm going to show you how to create a recipe or a recipe book or a recipe guide or a recipe booklet, whatever it is that you want to call it inside of Canva. So it's very important that you know ahead of the time what it is that you're creating. So you need to know if you're creating a book or a guide. The reason why this is important is because you want to get an estimate of the number of pages that you will need. If you're creating a free resource, one design inside of Canva is going to be perfect. If you are creating a recipe book that you're hoping to sell, what you might want to consider is breaking that recipe down into sections. What you want to do is decide that maybe your cover page, your introduction and your breakfasts, for instance, is going to be in one design. Lunches and salads will be in a second. Dinner and miscellaneous might be in a third. It's also important to know your theme ahead of the time. So are you creating a recipe book with breakfast or gluten-free or sugar-free? What is the theme of your recipe book? Every recipe book has a theme. It's important to know what yours is before you get started. It's also important to start Pinterest board to get a general look and feel of what it is that you're hoping to create inside of your recipe book. What are your main colors going to be? What are the fonts going to be? You need to know all those things ahead of the time so that when you're sitting down and finally creating a recipe book inside of Canva, you've already thought of all those little things that will make creating your ebook or creating a recipe book inside of Canva as easy, simple, and quickly as possible. And then add your branding elements for your recipe book to your Canva account. If you want to learn how to set up your Canva account like a pro ahead of time, go look for the training that I created on how to set up your Canva account like a pro. What to do is to go to your Canva account and go to the plus sign for more design options. And you want to scroll down until you see blogging and ebooks. Go ahead and select the very first design option. Now the reason we're selecting a preset design is because we're hoping to create a recipe book or a guide in as little time as possible and the most important thing is to just get the content out and then later you can spend time editing it and styling it up. Canva already has some amazing preset designs that you can use for your recipe book. So what I recommend you do is to go through the Canva layouts to see what they have. For instance, this is a beautiful, simple cover. What every recipe book needs is a cover, a content page, an introduction page, your recipe pages or chapters, and then at the end, what you want them to do next, what their next step is. You'll notice that the free Canva layouts are going to be right at the top, and those are gonna be the one that you want to try and go for. Sometimes there's just going to be one option and then sometimes when you scroll down you're going to notice that there's a number and that number will indicate that there's more designs inside of this template. So for instance, if you're wanting to go for a soft feminine look, this might be a great design to go for. And to enter it, all I do is I add new pages and then I click on the template that I want to use or you can drag it. What you'll do is you'll scroll through and you'll look for design layouts that feel like they might work for your recipe book. So your brand colors should be either under brand colors or you will create a specific new folder for it called your recipe book. And then you'll also create a photo folder for all of those recipes. All the images that you want to source and use in your recipe book, you'll add to a photo folder. So let's say that I would like to go for this soft pink and gold feminine. So now what I do is I add in and create a rough idea of maybe what I would like to create for my cover. I already know what my recipe book is all about so I can go ahead and I can add the name and maybe just play around with the basic idea for my book. Don't worry about getting your cover perfect right off the bat. 
just play around with ideas, add in your content, have a general idea, but know that you can always circle back and change that. Instead of one image, you can choose to have two. And you can also choose to maybe bring in an image of yourself. Okay, so there's re two really quick cover ideas. Try not to spend too much time on this because the most important part is just getting the content out and then styling it up later. So next you want to style out your table of contents. So most of the time, recipe book would have a few more pages than this. So let's say yours is just a quick guide on some breakfasts. Then you can make that smaller. Let's take that circle out. There we go. Maybe add in two more. And then I recommend completing these towards the end once you know what the final page numbers will actually be. And if the circles are a part of your theme, you can keep that or you can remove the circles and add in. If you were doing squares, that same vibe. Send it to the back so that the text pops forward. You can also choose to bring in like a food shot. So what you could do if you're wanting to stick to the circles, you want to look for the option to add in a photo element drag it smaller, and then bring in one of your images. And then if you like that idea, you could group it and copy it and maybe have another one on the other side. Just a quick fun style tip. And you always want to include an introduction. What is this booklet about? Why did you create it? Who are you? Why should we learn from you? Really quickly, let us know what it is that we can expect from you and from this recipe guide. So later, once you've got like a definite idea of the layout of your recipe, then you want to make sure that everything just has that same kind of look and feel. So here you can keep doing the circles because there's a big circle right here on the cover. So you could include another circle here on the intro page and have the text wrap around it. Or since we're also going for rectangles, you can also include a photo holder for a rectangle. So you can go to elements, frames, and a frame is just going to help us insert an image. Let's select one of these options, move it to where we'd like it. Make sure that you're keeping a consistent border on all of your pages. I'm going to copy this guy so that there's consistency. And so what you can do on this page is obviously you wanna include an image of yourself so that people know who you are. You can also include a link to a video and then add in a URL so that when they click on that, it takes them to a page on your website where they can listen to the introduction or listen to a video that accompanies this recipe guide. Make sure that the video in the background and where you're sending them matches up to the colors and the branding that you're choosing for your recipe book. Next, you want to create your basic recipe layout. Every single recipe should have at least these five elements. Number one is a name for the recipe. And number two, and very important, a lot of people forget about this step is how much does the recipe yield? How much does it make? How long does the recipe take to make? And how long does the recipe cook for? People want to know how much time they're investing in a recipe right off the bat. So you want to make sure that you're giving them that information. Number three, image. If you've got an on-brand clear image, please include an image. Remember that people eat with their eyes first. So it's very important that you try and include a relevant image, image of the recipe. Then you've got your ingredients section followed by your directions. And that makes up the five most important parts of every single recipe. And then if you wanted to, and if it makes sense in this space on the page, you could have a space for variations or extra tips or information that links back to maybe the video that you speak about on the introduction page. So just a few pointers, try to list out your 
ingredients underneath each other because it'll be easier that way instead of having them all on different lines. Your first recipe is going to set the stage for the general layout of your recipe. So you wanna make sure that most of them follow the same look and feel. And then for the directions, you can have a sentence like over here or just list them by number one, preheat the oven two. So the next step is to go through and edit. So you wanna make sure that you're doing things consistently. If you're putting a full stop after tablespoon and you're abbreviating it like this, make sure that it's consistent all throughout the whole document. Try to keep this recipe page as simple and straightforward as possible. Try not to add too much information. See what you can say with less words. And what you can also do is you can have the extra tips information stand out a little bit more by adding some of the elements that you used all throughout the document. Now you can also go through and if you wanted to make changes to your fonts or last minute changes maybe to your font colors, you can go ahead and do that too. The reason I suggest doing the final styling at the end is because when it comes to recipes, the most important part is to get the contents out, to make sure that everything that you want to say is said and then you can go through edit it and style it out. So towards the end, your recipe book might look something like this. And once you're done with your recipe guide or your recipe book, what you wanna do is complete your table of contents. You've added a, a last page, so a page right at the end where you tell us what you would like for us to do next. And you've also added in any URLs. So it's a great idea to maybe include your website in a footer. And then what you can do is add in those right into the Canva document. Then what you wanna do is download this as a PDF for print. And there is your beautiful recipe guide that you created inside of Canva. You can also use this training to just create one recipe sheet or to export it as a PDF and an upload on your website. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.